Between the time when the oceans drank Atlantis and the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of. And on to this, Conan, destined to bear the jeweled crown of Aquilonia upon a troubled brow. It is I, his chronicler, who alone can tell thee of his saga. Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Evening all. It's raining in the cabin. Hear that? So, next fireside rant. I do have one tonight. Really. But it's going to be a nice calm one because I've had my coffee and chilled out and I'm not going to get too irate about things that I'm, I'm no need to be irate about. Um, I'd like to talk about history. My bread and butter, really. It's history. Uh, that, by the way, was um, Conan the Barbarian. The Anvil of Crom from the Conan the Barbarian official soundtrack by Basil, pa uh, Basil Dorius. Link is in the description. Go and check it out. And if you can, go and buy the album or buy the movie. Do whatever you can to get a hold of it. Because it's epic. So... History. There was an article a little while ago by the BBC that covered whether Julius Caesar, Roman dictator, was actually black. Okay. Now, I just had a call yesterday, well, and today, with someone called Simon Trues from the BBC. Right, and this is this is part of my, the university that I'm studying at um, for my next master's in education. Um, they invited me onto a call with this journalist um, to talk about um, history and whether it's been misappropriated by the BBC. Spoiler: It has. But um, we got into quite a a live argument, you know, quite a lively argument, and. Um, which the, the BBC reporter essentially said, and this will come out in the... Uh, I, I, I'm going to put it on my channel whenever, whenever the article comes out. Um, he said that all, all history should essentially be stopped uh, on, on curriculums. Okay? Until we find a way for it to be more representative. Until we revise it. His words, not mine. Until we revise it to be more representative of other ethnic backgrounds and races and people. To which I vehemently disagreed. And I said, um, well, I went on a bit of a rant, to be honest with you. A nice calm rant, not, not a huge. Uh, but I essentially said, what you're doing is appropriating history. Okay? So, listen. People, every single people in, in the world, every, every single group of peoples, right? They all have history. They all have historical um, events and facts and cultures and religions and legends that should be preserved, okay? Now, I agree with the sentiment of this journalist, okay? I do agree. I said that at the time. I'm on video saying it. Um, and when the video comes out, I will post it to the channel, right? I do agree with the sentiment. I think I'm teaching a class that is 60% white, 20% Pakistani, and let's say 30% um, African, okay? And I, I would try and teach my class with 60% of Roman, Greek, you know, Anglo-Saxon stuff, right? And I would do 30% of the Empire of Mali and the Empire of Ghana and all these amazing sub-Saharan sub, sub African empires. And I would do, you know, 
um, and done the twenty percent on on Pakistani history of of the the Hindu Kush and all these amazing kingdoms that Alexander the Great fought, for example, and think people like that. Okay, like so, like kings like Porus, people like that. So, I think history should be more inclusive. I do think that. I think that history classes should cover more in terms of content rather than just Greece and Rome. Uh, we should cover essentially the cultures that we have in our classrooms, and if our, and if our classrooms are getting more diverse, they should do. Then our content should get more diverse. What we shouldn't do is appropriate and change and com and corrupt history. Okay, and that is what this BBC article is doing. It is corrupting, it is shaping, and it is bollocksing all over history. Now, the actual Julius Caesar cartoon came out quite a while ago, but it's been re revisited since, um, obviously, the, the Black Lives Matter stuff has been kicking off. And, to me, I actually said today, I, I said, if you have that opinion, you're, that, that's a racist opinion. So, so you, don't, you obviously don't think that black culture is interesting enough, and so you go and try and graft on black culture onto white history. Because you clearly don't think that they have anything of their of themselves to contribute. Black culture has an amazing amount of historical background, of of amazing different trading cultures, um, alphabets, um, techniques in war, techniques in trading, techniques in river trading, techniques in shipbuilding. All of these different things, and we haven't even touched on Egypt, which is technically an African empire. We we haven't even touched on the most famous one in Egypt and still you go to Mali you go to Ghana you go to all of these different um, sub-saharan empires and you have these amazing facets of culture going on that you're completely ignoring simply because you're woke okay and you want to be an ally so much that you are willing to try and convince people that Julius Caesar was black That, to me, when you start to revise history, suit your own modern ends, it ceases to be history. It is now propaganda. So, for me as a historian, I'm going to use a quote from Marvel here. Uh, with great power comes great responsibility. If you're listening to this, and you're hist you're a historian. If you're doing university a university degree in history, or you're or you're you're simply uh, someone who likes to do research and write about it, or think about it, or talk about it, you're a historian. Congratulations. You have a hit. You have a a responsibility because you have a great power to go into the past, and your responsibility number one is to find the truth or as close to it as you can, right? And number two is to preserve. It's to preserve that truth so that people who come after you can learn about, from it and build on it and look further than you could. The very second you start to revise history, you start to change history, you pervert the very nature of the discipline you're trying to be a part of. I actually think it's actually an evil thing to do. Okay. Very same thing the Nazis tried to do. Right. Not comparing this journalist to the Nazis where anyone goes off on one, right? He's a, he was a perfectly reasonable gentleman when I was speaking to him, but... The Nazis did the same thing. Tried to revise history to suit their own ends. That's why Nazis did not like religion as a whole. Right? They didn't like anything that didn't paint the Aryan race in a in a stellar light. Okay. They took all of the iconography of the Roman Empire to try and wash away the fact that these people who weren't Aryans once ruled most of the entire Western world. Okay. And we'll skip ahead to the Islamic State. What did the Islamic State try to do? They went around their region and they blew up spaces of antiquity. They blew up anywhere that basically disproved the fact that the that the the world wasn't 
only a couple of thousand years old. Anything that's pre-Muhammad, gone. Because it didn't agree with their narrative. That's e that's true evil for me. You know? And beyond the killing and all that, I, that, 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 that's still evil, I know that. But to me, the actual perversion of history is evil. The Romans did it with Carthage. The Romans completely obliterated Carthaginian culture. They obliterated Carthaginian language. And anything to do with them. So we only ever hear about the Carthaginians through Rome. We never actually hear from them in their own words, in their own voice. This is a modern example of historical genocide. This is a, this is a modern day example of people playing God with history. And this is what I mean when I say you've got a huge responsibility as a historian, because you can technically play God. You are a, a historian who has a lot of clout, right? And who people respect the opinion of. You can make people believe all sorts of things about history. Which is why you have to treat it with care and respect. What the BBC is not doing is treating history with care and respect. And, in fact, I believe the BBC... You want to talk about the UK being racist from the ground up, which I, by the way, do not believe it is. I think we're, we, we have a... I think the UK is a fantastic country, accepting country. A country that has been dragged through the coals by people who want to virtue signal. That's what I think is going on. But on the flip side of that, it's opinions like this that expose the woke people. It's opinions like this. It's, it's, it's saying your culture isn't good enough to have your own stuff either because I couldn't be bothered researching it or I'm completely racist and I don't think your culture has any worth. So here's Julius Caesar, guys. He's yours now. Absolute bollocks. And I'll continue to fight that corner. Because at the end of the day, history doesn't care about your feelings. And you're getting in the way of real progress. Real progress in schools, at least in my opinion, and any school I want to teach at, is representation. I'm teaching in a black school, which I very may well end up doing when I go to Chicago. If they end up teaching in a black school, I will fight to teach black history. I know I won't be able to, because it'll all be about the founding fathers and, and, you know, things like that, and Rome and Greece, but I, I want to teach the Empire of Mali. I want to teach Ghana. I want to teach the Ivory Coast. I want to teach all these astonishing cultures that sprang up, you know? Isn't it, isn't it terrible? And this is why I'm not a fan of Black Panther. Segue. Isn't it an indictment of our educational system that the one black culture you can point to that everyone knows and everyone can recite is a fictional one? Wakanda. Yeah? You go to an average person, an average black school child in America, in Chicago, and you tell them, can you tell me a historical African civilization. One or two may get Egypt. Then, then if, what if I say, can you tell me a historical sub-Saharan African civilization? 90% of them would know Wakanda, which doesn't exist. And I tell you now, if I heard any name of any empire that actually existed, I, I would be floored. I would actually be floored. I'd, be, I'd, I'd just be amazed. Okay? Representation matters in the classroom. We need to make sure that those in schools, in classes, are being taught things about their own cultures that hook them into history that show them how cool history is that show them about their own ethnic backgrounds 
and they hold a mirror to them and say, isn't this cool? Look at this. That's what we need to do. What we don't need to do is revise history to suit modern day whims. Especially if those whims are from people like the woke movement going on at the moment. nice 15 minute rant there that's all i wanted to say because that article will research will surface again towards christmas i think money told us um there will be a video on it on the bbc website i probably will be on the video so you know just just wanted to get my piece in here just in case they try and chop it up to make us look bad okay that is my opinion for posterity, for the record. Let's move on. So, what the hell is going on in the world right now? Well, I have a date to go to the United States. It is the 11th of December, which is fantastic. Okay, now, um, we're getting everything ready for that date, getting me ready to go. Um, I'm putting off getting a new PC until I go to the United States. So I'm going to be playing Cyberpunk on the PS4. But, really cool thing is, I've been playing things like Wolfenstein on the PS4. I'm actually better at first-person shooters using a pad, I think, than anything else. Um, but, uh, I will be getting a new PC when I go to the States, so I will be doing videos and things. Um, there will be a, a huge downturn, though, in content on the 11th until the new year. Okay? Uh, because I get my... I'll be getting my PC around Christmas time, and then I'll be spending time with family over Christmas, so it'll be early on in the new year when I start doing content again. So from the 11th of December, don't be expecting much from me at all in terms of content. Um, another thing, thank you, I'm on 500 subscribers now, and 4 Patreon members, which is, which is more than I ever thought I would ever get, which is, I have to say thank you very, very, very much to everyone who's, who's helping me out. Um, you know, any money that I receive goes straight towards um, education, goes straight towards getting me to the United States, it goes straight towards, you know, uh, packing and tickets and all these different things that need to happen to get me over there. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I don't need your help to get over there, but any, any every little helps, because me and my wife are planning a brand new life over there. And, um, it doesn't come cheap. I'll tell you that now. Um, that's what's going on in my life. Okay? All going very, very, very well. Um, what else is there? Well, I can't wait for when I get a new PC to play on, like, strategy games and stuff. I can't wait to record those and just... Have, you know, just to be able to go over historical events and actually show you, you know, how weapons work and why they worked and, and a lot of you know this already because I've actually got quite a well-educated um, subscriber base, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing that when the new PC... Uh, new content is always on the way, especially with the PS4. You know, I may actually stream when I'm in the US with the PS4, we'll see. Um, because... I actually think it's a fantastic piece of hardware because my streams and everything that I've been using to do streams have been just absolutely phenomenal. And there's been no lag, there's been no no sort of um, issues at all. Even the PS4 itself is really quiet when I'm streaming, so I'm probably going to keep on doing that. I'm really enjoying Wolfenstein. I'm going to be on a little bit later on. And after this, I've recorded this, I'm going to go play some Fallout 4. Uh, also in the midst of a diet I say a diet more of a lifestyle change so it's brutal but drinking loads of water, eating healthily you know, cutting out all, all of the rubbish and, that I have in my diet or I had in my diet so I look, you know, so I look pretty good, I'm getting married in June of next year so I need to look really good when it comes to my uh, actual marriage. Um, my wife's going to look like a million bucks, so I don't want to look like the you know, dishevelled British vampire sticking on the end of family photos. Um, I want to look good. I want to look like 
you know, I got some, got something about me. Yeah, I want to look well built. Um, what else has been going on? Oh yes, the GW stock prices. Um, so GW stock has gone up 111.1% over the lockdown period. And I've had people asking me on stream whether, you know, why that is. Now, what you've got to remember, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, is that Games Workshop as a business, they, well, put it this way, on that graph, there are several companies. There's NVIDIA, there's AMD, there's EA, there's you know, Nintendo. And above all of those, in terms of growth, there's Games Workshop at 111.1% growth in stock prices and things. Um, what you've got to remember on that one is simply the fact that the markup GW sell their, sell their stock at. So if you look at um, EA, okay, it costs them hundreds of millions of dollars to make a game. It just does, you know, because they're, they're a AAA publisher, that's what they do. They supply all of the money, all of the wages for all of those studios to go and make games. And then they they make money on those games. Okay, cool. Awesome. They've had a huge backlash in terms of uh, microtransactions, people, things like that. Even without that, they're still making a fair bit of money. And let's look at Games Workshop. I can tell you now, let, let, let's say let's say an Imperial Knight as a... As a, as a as an example, so an Imperial Knight is worth £90, yeah? If you go into Games Workshop, you buy an Imperial Knight for £90. Let me just see on the Games Workshop website how much it is. Okay, just so I've got it, I've got it right. So, uh, oh, full disclosure, by the way, ladies and gents, I do have Games Workshop stock. I was given Games Workshop stock when I was an employee part of my package and I've still got it not sold it um so I'm for Imperial Knight aren't I? Imperial Knight so an Imperial Knight is at 95 100 pounds for a Castellan okay so a normal Imperial Knight 95 pounds or even worse 95 pounds <sighs> okay so Ninety-five pounds, and I've told this story many, many, many times. And that is, when I was doing my training, and I asked my supervisor, I asked my trainer, um, "What do I do if someone run, runs out of the store with product? Yeah, they're stealing product. What do I do?" And he said, "Well, just let them go." I said, "What? Well, don't even call the police." He said, "Well, if they come back, definitely call the police." But no, not really. Um, and, and do not intervene whenever you do. And I said, well, why is that? He said, well, yeah. I don't, in all honesty, what's in the box? The plastic that's in the box is worth around £4. The box itself is worth around £10. Because the printing and all that stuff, right? Now, let's extrapolate how much the moulding technology costs at King's Workshop. It costs around £30 million. Okay. So, they spent thirty million pounds on their process, moulding, taking things out of moulds and making them models. Let's just say that pays for itself within a year, right? And the last update they did was a couple of years ago, so it's paid for itself in a year. So from that point onwards, they're making straight profit, hand over fist. Yeah. So, how much profit is in that Imperial Knight box? So it's £15 worth of stuff in the Imperial Knight box. Yeah? Now, let, now let's look at packaging and things like that and sending it to the store. So let's add another £10 onto that from getting it to the warehouse to the to the store. Alright? Cool. That's £25 off Games Workshop to put this product in the store. They then charge £95 for it. That's a £70 profit hard profit on every single Imperial Knight they sell in the store. And people ask why they're doing so well at the moment. Okay? This profit gets even better when you start selling things on the store, on the online store. 
And the reason why they give you free postage is because they're making so much money from you anyway. And if you're spending a certain amount of money, they're getting free. They're, 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 they want to give you free postage. So, Games Workshop as a business is probably. Um, look, now, I, I want to get this out of the way. I don't think Games Workshop are an evil company. Right? They're not EA. When I matter what anyone thinks, they're not EA. There are a lot of good people working in Games Workshop. Okay? Um, there are also a lot of shitty people working at Games Work. But what I would say is that as a business, it is the most cost-effective business I think has ever existed, especially in the, in the, the nerd sphere. Okay? You can talk Magic the Gathering all you want. That's fine. But I honestly think that in terms of a, a British company as well, they are the most cost-effective business I have ever seen. Their costs are very low. They pay their staff next to nothing. When I, even when you become a manager, they pay you next to nothing. And they are so clever in that they approach their staff in a weird cult of personality way, where you want to please them, you want to work for nothing, you want to work overtime for no money. You want to lick boots and say, yes sir, yes sir, thank you sir, three bags full sir. Because you want to work for this company that you idolise so much without actually realising that they're turning you into a beggar. They're turning you into a guy who has no money. No prospects. When you leave Games Workshop after, let's say, 10 years of being a manager, do you really think you're going to get a job anywhere else with your CV? No. You're not. You may get a job in M&S as a store manager. Whether you'd, whether you'd want that stress or not is up to you. You know, and you'll probably get a little bit more money than you would at Games Workshop. Not much. Not much. If you choose retail, they, they tell you all the time that this is a really good thing to have on your CV for other jobs. No, it's not. It's not. Right? Um, put it this way. When I, was, I had my CV for student teaching, to go and, to go and teach in schools, uh, the last thing they looked at was the Games Workshop stuff. What they looked at was my background my hobbies, my interests, my passion for teaching, where I've taught, um, and the skills I've developed over my life, rather than, oh my god, you were a manager at Games Workshop for so long, okay? It doesn't matter. No one cares. No one cares. So that's what I would say. You know, it, it just... It just... It's made for a certain person. And, you know, <laughs> if you if you have a degree, and I mean a decent degree, something, and you choose to go and work for Games Workshop and retail, all power to you. But do not come crying to me, or anyone else, when you get shot on from a great height, when you leave the company, and you can't get a job anywhere else. That's all I've got to say on that one. And that's why Games Workshop stock price is so high. Because they give, they have extortionate prices. They have an amazing markup of their products. They hardly pay their staff. Who are willing to basically work for free. They are... Evil geniuses. And that's without us going into all of the moral bullshit that they've been going over the past couple of months. So that's why GW stock is very high. Um, what else do I have to say? Oh, the Merseyside Derby. Football. The Merseyside Derby is this weekend. Everton are top of the league. Thank you very much. Top of the league. And uh, we face Liverpool in the Merseyside Derby. So I'm very nervous because this is the first derby that we've had in a long, 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 long time where we are, if not equals on the pitch, we are almost expected to beat them. There are a lot of other, other fans saying, yeah, I'm putting money on Everton to win. So I'm extremely nervous, because if we beat Liverpool, then people will start talking about Everton as Premier League champions, maybe, which is 
terrifying, but also really exciting. But we'll see. Not get ahead of ourselves. Um, what else? What games am I playing at the moment? Well, I'm playing Wolfenstein right now, which I'm really enjoying. I'm doing that on stream, which you will see later on tonight. I was playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but to be honest with you, after playing Ghost of, Sh Ghost of Tsushima, it, it just it feels like when you're playing Odyssey, it feels like you're moving in treacle. It just feels like you're not moving at all. And it, it's so locky, so static. That it just isn't up my alley at all. And if Valhalla is going down the same route with its combat, I doubt I'll get it. Just saying now, I, I really doubt I'll get it. Especially with um, Cyberpunk coming in mid-November. Like, I, I honestly doubt I will get uh, Valhalla, if it, Valhalla if it's like that. If I've got a bit of spare cash lying around, I might throw it at it, but we'll see. We'll see. I might even stream it, because I'm not even that excited for it anymore. So, what else has been going on? Uh, nothing much, really. Um, getting my wife's birthday present sorted out this week, which is really cool. Birthday is at the end of the month. Um, what else? Uh, nothing really, actually. I don't think there's anything else really going on. I'm ready to leave it there. So, one other thing. Um, thank you very, very, very much for subscribing. Thank you for making this year really wonderful for me. Because people who turn up to the streams and they talk and they, they get involved. Really amazing to, to do that. To, to you know, have people get on board and have fun. Um, I really want to do a bit of a giveaway, but I'm going to have to have, have a little think of what I want to give away. Um, I think I may do a stream game, uh, sorry, a stream game, a Steam game of £15 or under. And that might be pretty cool if anyone who wants to, wants to. I'm looking into that, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how things go uh, with, the, with the current streams. But I really don't want to do it if there's only going to be five people, you know, Planning up for it. But anyway, thank you so, 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 so much. Oh, oh, and also, there's been a bit of a drama this week between the quartering. I don't know if you, anyone, anyone of you know who he is. Very good YouTube channel. And Angry Joe. Now, Angry Joe was a favourite of mine for many, many years. Um, but I found his content in recent years to be extremely derivative and warning towards the lowest common denominator. Um, I, I actually find the content with other Joe on, on this channel much more entertaining <laughs> than actually when Angry Joe's on screen. Um, and recently, the Quartering released a, uh, uh, a tweet on Twitter, basically saying, um, you know, so, so I, I, I think IGN did, you know, who are the best uh, black characters in video games, and and the Quartering you has. Two black dads, by the way. I think they're homosexuals, but I'm not sure. Um, basically stated, you stop race baiting. Like you stop worshiping race. Stop, stop promoting this unity. You know, and it's not your place to talk about this kind of stuff. To which Angry Joe replied, um, "It's Black History Month. You know, how dare you? Blah blah." And then it basically insinuated that the quartering was a racist. Um, all this after the quartering has basically offered to give Joe a free Xbox Series X. Right? When he had an extra one, because Joe was struggling to get one. And after Joe was actually caught up in the Me Too movement, and he was falsely accused of stuff, and the quartering released a really popular video defending Joe, and basically stating that he did nothing of the sort. And Joe actually reached out to him and thanked him for that. So, so this is what I mean in terms of the left costing people friends. This woke bullshit that turns friends who you once thought were reasonable, calm, rational people into frothing at the mouth people who are determined to be angry and insulted and offended by anything that you do. If you have someone like that in your life and everyone does, cut them out. Cut them out, like a fucking tumour. Cut them out, throw them aside. Because um, we don't need that. We don't need that kind of negativity. And, you know, the, the world's a negative place as it is. We don't need it. Get rid of it. I've already started doing it. You know? If you disagree with me, that's fine. That's fine. 
We're acting like I'm the bad guy. Acting like there's something wrong with me. Acting like you're disappointed in me. Acting like you're concerned for me. Go fuck yourself. Get off your high horse. Go fuck yourself. Alright. Go look in the mirror before you start casting judgement elsewhere. That's all I've got to say about that. So thank you very, very, very much for tuning in. Uh, this has been the Northern Exile. And this has been the Northern Exile Fireside Rants podcast. And I'll speak to you next time.